Hey, this is Dr. Corey Glenn with Blue Sky Bio, and I'm going to go through in this video one of the methods which you can use to capture your data for doing the digital denture process. Now, there's a lot of different ways that you can do this. It's by no means the only one, but I do find it to be the easiest, especially for most new users. Uh, you know, you could take uh, master impressions and directly scan the impressions. You could do wash impressions inside of a patient's existing denture. All of those would work, but just standard old models, I think, is the easiest way to do this. So if you think about your typical denture workflow, what you do is you give the lab your upper and lower master impressions. And from those master impressions, they're going to pour up a master model and create some bite rims for you. You take the bite rims into the mouth and you're going to set the occlusal plane of the maxillary. You're going to mark the midline, find where the commissures of the mouth are, figure out where the incisal edge belongs. And then with that done, you'll add wax uh, or I should say remove wax until you get the upper and lower in the right occlusion. And then once you have that, you just simply take the bite record between those. So these would be upper and lower finished bite rims. And I lost some wax here, but that's okay. Um, you would do your upper and lower bite rims. As you can see, everything's been marked. And with that done, you would capture the bite and then you're really done with the patient and ready to scan everything in and make your final dentures. And so if we jump over to the software, what we're gonna do first is open up the DS3D software and click new. We wanna start a new case here. We need to tell if we're scanning models or impressions. So this is going to be models and you can put in the patient name. And with this one, you can scan in whatever order you want. So I'm gonna hit lower first. And a preview window is going to come up and you see a, a picture on the left-hand side that tells you to orient the model like so. And so what I wanna do is get my lower model and I wanna position it on the sticky tack material on one of the scanning plates. And I'm just going to press this in and notice that I've got the model centered in the field of view. So basically the camera knows to cut out anything that's outside of the circular edges here. And so you definitely want to make sure that you've got the model centered with all of the important parts within the circular part of the scanning platform. With that done, we can position it on the magnetic plate. You wanna have the blue and yellow dot facing back. And when you look at this on the preview window over on the right hand side, you notice that it's a little bit low. Whenever I see that, I know that I need to raise the height up. So you can grab the height adapter, put it on and just place this back onto the scanning table. And now you notice that it's more in the middle of the field of view. That's important because really what you see in the right hand side is what it's going to be able to scan. So if it was positioned too low, it might cut off the entire lower half of your cast. So now that I've got the lower position, I'll click next. And the software is now going to begin scanning. It's gonna go through a predetermined set of scan positions, and then you'll have the opportunity to look at the model and review it and see if you wanna add data. So I'll time lapse this so you don't have to sit here and watch this entire thing. Okay, the lower is done scanning and processing. And as I look at this, I'm not seeing any holes within the model. And so we're ready to go ahead to the next uh, scan, which will be the upper. Now, if by chance you did have a hole somewhere in the mesh, you could orient the camera to where it's looking in. And actually I do see a very, very tiny hole right here. I don't know how well you can see that, but just to demonstrate it, I'm gonna hit add view. So I've oriented it to look into that area and I'll hit add view. And the camera's just gonna spin around and take another picture looking into that spot so that it can add more data to the scan. Processing. And now you see that it's filled that in completely. So I'll click finish here. That's it for the lower scan. And now let's swatch, swap out and put the upper model on. Exact same thing, just embed it into the sticky tack material. And then we'll position that onto the plate. And now let's click scan upper. So it looks like it's right in the middle of the field of view, which is great. So I'll click next. Okay, the upper scan is complete. We can look it over and it looks like there's no holes or missing data in that one. So I'll click finish. 
And now the last step is that we need to add the alignment, or a buckle bite, some might call it. And so what I'll do for this is I'm going to take the bite rims that we've generated and just seat the models into them. Remember, this is how your lab would go about mounting these into occlusion. They would take their master models, seat them back into the bite rims, and then in our case, we're going to rubber band these together. And we just want to make sure those are stable, that everything is fully seated where it needs to be. I did chip some wax here, but that's all right. All right, so everything is where it should be now, and what I'll do is mount this onto the scanning plate. And one thing about scanning wax, and I've already added a little bit, but you're going to want to powder any wax because wax is really shiny and translucent and optical scanners, especially desktop ones, don't love shiny stuff. And so hit it with a little dusting of powder. It doesn't have to necessarily be dental powder. You could use some body spray from the drugstore or whatever. With that done, we now click on the button that says alignment. And you can see here there's multiple different methods that we can choose from. The one we're doing is upper and lower casts in occlusion. But you do also have the option to scan a bite registration, uh, to do an articulator scan. The only reason I didn't do an articulator scan here is because an articulator scan, you're going to actually rotate this up and out of the way and stick the entire articulator in. But because it can't spin around, it's just capturing one picture. And I really want to see all of this buckle surface to these rims because that's where I've developed my occlusal plane, marked the midline. So I don't want just one still picture. I want to see the entire thing. So we'll click on upper and lower casts in occlusion, and then I'm going to click next. Remember that you want this in the field of view, and this is a good opportunity to point something out. Um, remember that your buckle bite that we're about to capture here, you've got to have enough data of the models in the buckle bite that it can still see common surfaces between this and the models you've already generated. So all of this area where the wax rims are, that's going to get obscured by these bite rims. There's no common data with your previous models on that. So I want to position this to where it's sitting up high enough that the scanner is going to pick up the land areas of both casts because the land areas are really where you've got the common data between these uh, models. Okay, so that's a bit better. Let's orient that in between. And now, as you can see, I've got all of this land area that's common between the two models. And so when we scan this, there's enough data from the buckle bite that it can take the lower model and stitch it via these, these common uh, land area marks on both the upper and the lower. Okay, so let's click next. Processing. So whenever you're doing the buckle bite alignment, it's only going to take a single picture, and that would generally be fine if all we were trying to do was align these. But I actually want to use this scan not only for aligning, but for referencing my occlusal plane that I've worked out with these rims. So I'm going to rotate it a little bit and add a view on both sides, and that will give me a more complete view of my rims. Okay, so we got all the buckle area on that side. Now we just want to rotate it and add one more view. And with that, we now have a really good view of what the entire occlusal plane is. I can see the midline marking right here. And so we're done with this. I'll click finish. And the last step that we'll do is the cropping and the aligning, but we need to let this finish post-processing before we jump to that. Okay, when it's done post-processing, it'll change from saying post-processing down here in the bottom left corner to ready. And with that done, we're going to click align. Always do your aligning first before you do any model cropping because you might accidentally crop out areas of your model that it needs for purposes of stitching. So what you're seeing right here is the software is just automatically trying to stitch this. It's taking the data from the buckle bite and then looking for common data on the individual upper and lower scans and trying to stitch it to that. And as you can see here, our models look like they're well oriented. Uh, it says, are the scans well aligned? Yes. And so now we can finish. Now your models have been aligned to one another in the right position. And the last thing I want to do is go ahead and crop these. So hit the crop button. 
There's not a lot to crop on this one, but just to demonstrate, I'll show we can use the crop tool. And what you want to do is circle the areas that you actually want to keep. So many softwares, you actually circle the area you want to delete. With this one, you circle what you want to keep and then hit crop. And it will get rid of all that data below it. And now I can switch over to the upper. And again, I'll use the lasso tool, circle the area that I want to keep. And that looks good. Really not a huge need to trim the alignment. You can do so if you want. Um, Cause at this stage, now that they've uh, been aligned, we don't necessarily need all this land area. So if you wanted to, you could get rid of some of that by using the crop tool. And hit crop. And now you could just visualize that without having to see all that other stuff. We've got some little floating bits of data here. So I'll get rid of that. And with that, I can save all of them and we're done. And the last step is you need to export the files. And once you click export, it's going to save those to the designated folder that you've um, chosen. And here you see that I have three models that resulted. So I'm just gonna open these in Mesh Mixer real quickly so that you can see what they all look like. So here are our three scans. We've got the buckle bite. As you can see, it's all been positioned correctly. So when I go into the Blue Sky software and begin setting teeth, I can look at this and toggle it on and off and know that I need my midline to be right here. And I can know that I want the occlusal plane to be going right along this plane, that my incisal edge needs to be right here. So this is why I go with that method because it gives me a lot more information about where to set teeth based on those wax rims. If I turn that off, you can see each upper and lower model individually, but this is done at this point. Now we're ready to go into the software. So this is again, just the simplest way in my opinion. It's not the only way, and I'll try to make some other videos of the more advanced ways such as scanning uh, impressions or scanning dentures that have had a wash impression done inside of them.